Hi, everyone. Welcome to our CKI 101 workshop led by me, Ricardo Porras, and Stinky. Olivia, you're not going to say your name. Ricardo Porras. <laughs> and uh, Olivia Chain. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> And we basically introduced ourselves, but I'm Olivia. I'm the president of Cal State Long Beach, currently a fifth year graphic design major. And I'm Ricardo, otherwise known as Ricky to a lot of people in the club. I serve as the vice pre president of administration and I'm a fourth year psychology major. Wait, I didn't notice this edit. You're welcome. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> yes. And you guys haven't noticed our theme for our club is elemental space. I don't think we put that anywhere, so. It's very important. So first, we'll start out with a brief description of Kiwanis International. Um, Kiwanis International is basically our parent club. Um, we go to them whenever we need something, and they also sponsor us. Some fun facts about Kiwanis is they were founded in 1915. Um, what is Kiwanis exactly? Their mission is to improve the world one child and one community at a time. And they're based on the three core tenets of service leadership and fundraising, uh, similar to ours, except we replace fundraising with fellowship, apparently. <laughs> Olivia. Wait, no, this is Kiwanis International. It's not uh -huh. like... <laughs> um, they also have uh, sponsoring service leadership programs, otherwise known as um, SLPs, which are K Kids, Builders, Key Club Action and Circle K. Um, Circle K and Key Club are probably the most well-known ones to all of you, um, where the college level, Key Club is the high school level, K Kids is elementary, Builders is middle school, and Action is the club with uh, special needs. And our sponsoring Kiwanis is the Kiwanis Club of Long Beach. Yes, so what is Circle K International? That's it's it. Yeah, it's definitely not the gas station. <laughs> we are the world's largest student-led collegiate service organization. Um, blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of like facts about like how big we are. Um, so we have like 10,000 members worldwide. Um, it's mostly in the US, I would say, and 17 nations all over the world. Um, and Fun fact from Lillian, she counted this actually. We have 33 districts in Circle K International. If you don't know what a district is, we'll be going into that next. Um, but basically Circle K, oh wait, did we mention that we have a Kahoot at the end of this presentation? Ah, uh, it's funnier if we don't tell them and then they forget everything. Or they just go and play Among Us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and Circle K International was established in 1947, so it's actually not too old. Um, and this is basically the international board. Uh, so this is Tana, the international president, and Joey, the international vice president. And then on the international board, there's nine international <laughs> trustees. Um, so I don't know their names, but this is Tommy. <laughs> He's from. <laughs> uh, do we have like the original photo or he's just covered? No, nah, he's covered. Okay, you guys know what Tommy looks like. He's on this call. Just, just pin his video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Tommy works on the international level. Tommy got spared because we had a video we wanted to show, but we were like, nah, let's not embarrass Tommy. <laughs> we. We just forgot to put it on. It's not because we didn't want to <laughs> make it sound nicer. <laughs> but yes. Um. So levels of organization. First of all, I, I feel like everyone can tell who put that picture in the slides. Um, so as we mentioned before, uh, there's the international level that Tommy works on. Um, that's all of Circle K. Um, there's the district level, which are smaller areas um, inside the international like branch. Um, th that encompasses several different states slash provinces if you're in Canada or even countries. 
Um, there's the division level, which uh, encompasses several schools with clubs or those with potential to charter. Um, basically, inside your district, there's the smaller areas called divisions. Um, and then finally, there's club, Circle K at a specific school. So we're a club. Yeah, so we like to think of it as like an inverted pyramid where the club supports the members, the division supports the club, district supports the division, and international supports all the districts. Moving on, district level, um, we're part of the California, Nevada, Hawaii district. Um, we have, we're probably one of the biggest, actually we are one of the biggest, we are the biggest <laughs> district in <laughs> Circle K International with 3,000 members, um, 66 schools, and nine divisions. <laughs> yes. Um, but I'd say most clubs are in the California area. We probably, we have two Nevada schools and I think one active Hawaii school at the moment. Um, yeah, and then our district, they have their own initiatives. We forgot to mention, but internationally, they have their own uh, like service partners that they work with, as well as like a fundraising um, initiative, which is WASH. Um, so on a district level, our district service initiative for this term is serving the environment. Uh, basically, this initiative changes every year. As well as the district fundraising initiatives, these are three, three main causes that we fundraise for. We actually just added this new one, which is the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, like a month ago in August. Uh, so the Piaget Trauma Program and Kiwanis Family House are like permanent fundraising initiatives that we raise funds for every year. And then the third initiative changes each year. So it really like it depends on each term. Um, this year we decided to um, connect our DSI and DFI uh, together. So our service initiative is serving the environment and our fundraising initiative is Environmental Defense Fund. And then our major district events are Crazy Comp for Infants. It's like a relay race where we meet up with like all the Southern California schools as well as Hawaii and Nevada. And um, we play like relays, relay games together to raise funds for the pediatric trauma, trauma program. Um, and then Fall Training Conference is a leadership conference in Sonora, California, so NorCal. Um, so we all go up to like the woods, and we ca like at a campsite and um, basically we spend like the whole weekend together with workshops, like team activities and stuff like that. District convention decon is similar to fall training conference in that it's a conference and we're all like together for a three day weekend. Um, but district convention is at the end of the year while fall training conference is in November, so like the beginning. Um, so at district convention, that's usually when we get like our wards and that's when we elect our new district board. Um, and yeah, we basically just celebrate the end of the term. And then I added in spring training conference, but it's not as big as fall training conference and district convention in that it's split into north and south. So this picture down here is actually from spring training conference um, two years ago because this year was online and spring training conference is basically helps transition the new board members. So usually we get a new board in February. Um, so this conference is to help train them and get them ready for the new term. And then as a bonus, this is our mascot, Sunny. Oh, wow. Now we're talking about the district level. Um, continuing on with leadership. Um, so we have three elected positions on district, which are the district governor, uh, the district secretary, and the district treasurer. Um, those pictures that are up there are not actually what they look like. They just photoshopped their faces on their predecessors. 
Um, this year, our district governor is Catherine Hong, our secretary is Ryan Tan, and our treasurer is Brandon Dima, Dima Pasak. Um, then each division has their own lieutenant governor, which serves as the liaison between each uh, division and the rest of district board. Um, there's nine district governors currently, with Matthew Wimov being ours for Metro Division. Um, on top of that, the board is also consisted of 10 district chairs. Um, most chairs have committees as well. Um, they're led by district chairs, and also the secretary and the treasurer have their own committees as well. Um, they're responsible for a single aspect of the organization or a single district event. Uh, for instance, we have a committee just for FTC and a committee just for DCON since they are so big. And then there's also tech committee. And the reason why we wanted to highlight tech committee is because that dork right there in the white standing right in front of me is our district tech chair, Matthew Kim, who also goes to Long Beach. Um, and then finally, we have our district administrator, who's Armando, aka Mondo Velasquez. Yes, shout out to Matthew Kim. Shout out to me behind him. And that <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even notice that? I feel like I noticed when you cropped it, but A. Okay, now moving on to our division. Uh, Ricardo mentioned that the Lieutenant Governor is the liaison between clubs and district. Um, but basically, I think that extends to the whole division. Um, they're basically the bridge between clubs and the district. Um, this is an old map of where everyone lies. I don't think it's that old because it says citrus on it. Um, but basically our divisions are capital, which is like the NorCal clubs, uh, Central Coast, it's in like Central California. It's in the Central <laughs> Coast part. Yeah, Central Coast part. <laughs> pretty literal. The names are pretty literal. Like capital, it's like where the capital is, Sacramento. Um, Citrus, this name was actually changed recently from Magic Kingdom. It's basically the Orange County area. Um, and Desert Oasis, the desert. <laughs> uh, so there's clubs like UCR and UNLV. Uh, Las Vegas is also a part of Desert Oasis. And I know this looks like big, but it's definitely like Desert Oasis probably only has like three active clubs. I'm making that up, but yes. <laughs> um, Great information. Yes. <laughs> Foothill, um, this is, what area is this? The Foothill area? <laughs> Oh but in clubs like <laughs> Mouse Pack, um, Pasadena City College, um, LA City College, I'm making that up. Is that even a college? <laughs> oh, it is a college. Okay, nice. Uh, and then Golden Gate, it's like UC Berkeley, uh, San Francisco State, uh, Metro Division, that's our division. It's like the a LA area. So we have clubs like UCLA, uh, USC. We'll go into it later. Um, and then Paradise Division, th this includes Hawaii um, and Sunset Division. It includes yeah, the so they're all our division. That was really hard to listen to Olivia explain that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Every other sentence Olivia said, she said, I'm making that up. Um, <laughs> so, to get, so to get more in depth with the divisional level, um, we are part of the Metro Division, which is, as Olivia said, schools in the LA area. Here we have a list of the schools that are currently in Metro. Um, so we have us, Long Beach. We also have Northridge, who, where Steve is from. Um, we have El Camino College, where our LTG is from, and where one of our transfer students is from, Nathan. Cortez. Um, we also have Pepperdine, who just chartered this past spring, um, Pierce College, UCLA, and USC. Um, the leadership for each division it varies depending on what the LTG wants, but all everyone that's on board is called the DLT, which stands for the Division Leadership Team. Um, and we wanted to highlight members of the DLT that are from Long Beach. So we have Jao, San Augustine, who's the service chair. We have Nathan Cortez, who just joined, who's already the executive assistant. What a flex. 
Um, we have Renz Lane, who, who would have guessed it, is tech chair. Um, we have me, actually, who's the MD&E chair. And then we have Sophia Villarreal, who's the secretary. Um, and yeah, I don't think it's mentioned on the slide, but um, we also have two satellite clubs in the division, which are clubs that are not chartered yet, but are part of another club. Um, UCLA has Santa Monica College, and we have um, Dominguez Hills. Um, so if you saw in our board intro video, Nicolo is from Dominguez Hills, and we have a few other members from there as well. Um, basically, that just means they're a part of our club and are just trying to learn enough to charter on their own. Yeah. Um, so moving on to club level, Cal State Long Beach, Purple K is probably, I mean, it is one of the biggest in our district. Um, so we have about 100 members um, this past term. And I think we were chartered on November 6, 1958. And some of our notable events is a wake-a-thon, which is like an overnight event that the fundraising chair holds as well as new member induction. We went over this during the meeting, um, but it's basically where we get put into our families um, and the new members get welcomed into, into the club. So this photo on the top right is from new member induction. And club FTC, this is where, um, it's kind of like a club version of the big district event. Um, so we usually come, or like this past year, we combined it with family wars where, um, we would play games within our own families and compete with the other families. And then winter retreat is pretty recent that it was started. Um, we all go into like a cabin. The past few years has been Big Bear. Last year was Lebec. middle of nowhere. Lebec. <laughs> Lebec. Alpacas. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. You get to spend like three days together with the club. And Ricardo mentioned the Satellite Club. This is like super recent. Um, you might be seeing a few like Cal State Dominguez Hills members in our club or like in your families and stuff like that is because we are the host club to Cal State Dominguez Hills. And what that means is um, basically their club was like, has been inactive for a few years. So we're basically going to like host them yeah <laughs> we adopted them basically yeah we adopted them Nicolo is like the representative for them he's gonna try to recharter their club but basically we're showing them like the ins and out of board as well as like a club all right so now we're gonna move on to the three tenants of circle k as I mentioned before, um, Kiwan, oh, gee, thanks. As I mentioned before, um, Kiwanis has three tenets of service leadership and fundraising. Um, we differ in the fact that we have fellowship. So I guess we're just moving on to service because Olivia's impatient. All right, so first we have service. It's our core tenet. It's the reason why we're a club in the first place. All we do is service. Um, here are just some examples of service that we do, um, both in person and virtual. Uh, um, due to the COVID situation, we've tried our best, mostly McKenna and Audrey, um, to give our members uh, a semblance of doing service while all this is happening. So some online events we've been doing are like making card letters for literacy, which is just to help out like members, um, like smaller kids learn their alphabets. Um, we have seven cups. Uh, therapy, which is you get get some training, and then you go on an anonymous like call message center and talk to people about their problems. Um, other stuff we do is like make PTP dolls for the pediatric trauma program, um, dog toys for animal shelters, and the very few in-person events that we do do are like food drives with uh, the Salvation Army. Basically, that's the one down there where everyone wearing masks. Um, Despite the picture, we do maintain quarantine mm -hmm. regulations. So they're all wearing masks, gloves are provided at the event and we try to stay six feet apart unless we're taking a picture for Anthony. Um, if we were in person, some events we would be doing would be like I Dig Long Beach, which is just planting trees in communities. 
um, cleaning of wetlands, um, volunteering at the animal shelter, food drives, um, bigger events such as Go West, which is on the left, which we help make the floats for the Rose Parade. And then that small picture all the way in the middle is our serviceton, which is the, one of our very first service marathons where we just do hours and hours of service. But all of that has been moved online. So now we sit and watch Disney movies while doing service. Leadership. Um, so this is our full board. Um, and as Ricardo mentioned, we're going to have names of everyone. <laughs> but it'll go by quick. Um, this is first starting off with our elected board. These members are elected by the club in February. Um, yeah. <laughs> Basically, they have to like participate in like a caucus and everything because we're democracy. Um, and then Audrey's what the heck? What is <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to do my own slide, Ricardo. I'll do yours. <clears throat> Fine. First off, we have the president herself, Olivia Chang, a.k.a. Squeak. Um, she's the, the head rat of our club. Um, some of her duties include being the face of our club, running all meetings, whether they're board, general meetings, being our liaison for the division. Um, so we, when we have meetings with the divi on the divisional level, Olivia comes in and presents everything. Um, she basically is everyone's boss. She maintains how things are get going. Um, she's running the entire club. And also she likes to stick her tongue out a lot, if you've noticed in the pictures. And um, basically that last picture at the bottom is every, the dog is everyone in the club and then the U is Olivia. F. I'm not and then we have a video. Olivia. Yours. Olivia. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> webinar over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's end the webinar. <laughs> and then we have our vice president of administration, Ricardo Porin. <laughs> Ricardo. I hate her so much. I'll do my own slide. I don't need you. <laughs> Basically, he's my right hand man. Um, Ugh, I did not like hearing that. The um, appointed board, and basically, I feel like his duties are pretty similar to president. You know, I feel like we're basically co's, where <laughs> he check it, checks in with everyone on board um, and make sure that everyone's staying on task. <laughs> I mean, I basically, you basically said it all, Ricardo. <laughs> Yeah, I did my own slide. Yes. <laughs> These are interesting pictures of Ricardo. Ricardo. Why'd you zoom in on for this one? Ricardo. <laughs> This is not mine, so I zoomed in. <laughs> Wait. Olivia probably didn't notice, but I put way more embarrassing pictures of me right before the presentation. Um, this is just to make up for when we did our appointed board webinar and all of my pictures were really good while everyone else had sucky pictures. Um, yeah, you guys should remember this because he wanted to put nice photos of himself and I was yeah, like, same. heck no. <laughs> Next, we have my co, which is the vice president of ser service, who is Audrey Halim. So basically, they're also a VP in the club, um, but they're more service oriented. Um, I'm not going to say what her nickname is, especially not with her around. So um, <laughs> basically, she's in charge of our entire calendar. All the events that we do have to go by her. So whether they're service, uh, fellowship, or leadership based, we all have to 
tell her what's going on and what's going to happen and all the details and then she posts it on the calendar she also works with mckenna our service project chair to provide small scale large scale and medium scale services including marathons and the application for impact teams uh, on top of that, uh, she's a pain in our butts. Um, that's why our butt is numb. Uh, yes, if you know Audrey, she tends to say that a lot, that her butt is numb. She hasn't said that since she got appointed or elected. Something changed. But yeah. now she looks like Dora. So if you see her, you'll know it's her. <laughs> Moving on, we have... <laughs> Lillian on um, our secretary, aka Lilypad. Um, so basically, as a secretary, she's always taking meeting minutes at board meetings um, and taking attendance at general meetings and board meetings as well. Um, she has to submit monthly report forms to the district on like our club progress, as well as um, work with the recognition chair to. Uh, update everyone on like their status on like how many hours they have and stuff like that. Next up we have Mariella Michelle aka Sugar Mama. Uh, wait, did you auto correct that Olivia? I knew I know I had it as Sugar I, Mama. Oh I thought it was a mistake. <laughs> I hate you. Um, so basically, she's our treasurer. She's in charge of the membership application, how much dues are paid, and she makes sure that everyone pays them. Um, on top of that, her and the secretary run the MUC, which is just a database of all of our members to see who's paid, who's an actual member, um, random miscellaneous information. Uh, she's in charge of the budget for our club and whatever money we use in regards to the club is gone through her and she helps the fundraising chair plan fundraising events for the club yes moving on we have our appointed board and basically um in february is when the elected board gets appo what, appointed, appointed. <laughs> the elected board gets chosen um and then like a few weeks later they release apps for um, their own like appointed board based on what they want for that year um so yeah this is our appointed board for this year and to start off we have fundraising um our fundraising chair is millennia lim and aka v bucks maker i don't know what the v stands for virtual <laughs> virtual <laughs> f okay no that's a v yeah so Melania, basically, her name says it. Um, she raises funds for the club. She works super closely with the treasurer, Mariella, um, in making sure, you know, our club stays afloat. Um, we don't go in debt. <laughs> and besides that, she plans, she does a lot of event planning. Um, so she, well, I mean, it's basically for fundraising. But the Wakeathon is planned by the fundraising chair as well as um, this past summer. She did a lot of big fundraisers such as Cartoon Yourself um, and Stream Dare Month. So if you see embarrassing videos of us doing dares on our Facebook group page, it's because of Stream Dare Month. Um, but yeah. Nothing as embarrassing as her putting Tabasco on ice cream cone. <laughs> Yeah, she really likes spicy food, so I can't. <laughs> oh. Do you want to mention something first, Olivia? Or? I mean, I think you got it. All right, so next we have graphics, a.k.a. Empty Void. I'm not the one who put that, so... Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, we did have a graphics chair when the term started, but they decided to resign from the position just to focus on their mental health and school better. Um, so right now the position is vacant, but normally what the graphics chair would be doing is the graphics for the club um, is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, here we just have a few examples of what the graphics chair would be doing. Um, for instance, the one on the top right is a meeting banner for one of our general meetings. 
Um, the one right, right next to it on the left is uh, birthday graphics that would be released every month to just recognize the birthdays of our members. Um, at the bottom, we have an event graphic, which is just like, as Olivia mentioned before, we had a stream dare month. This graphic is just there to give the information of what's going on with the event. Um, and the date right there, um, the at very bottom corner, like text of it, it also says where the funds are going to. So any kind of specifications of an event like that would be on the graphic. And then the last big graphic they would have to do is on the bottom right, which is our large scale event graphics. Um, basically this one is for a new member induction, but any of the other large events that we've mentioned, Club FTC, Awakeathon, Banquet, um, we would have graphics for that as well as advertising graphics to build up the hype for it. Um, something not pictured, but we'll also mention later on with another position is that they would be in charge of media committee. Um, so in our club, we have both a newsletter and a scrapbook that is in charge, that is being led by two different A board positions. And this year they decided to have a joint committee where all the members work on both of them at the same time. Um, so the newsletter for spring and summer would be releasing very soon. So we'll have an example of what that looks like later on. Yeah, and you guys are the first ones to know that um, our graphics chair's graphics position is currently vacant. Um, so look out for apps next week. Um, we plan to release apps next meeting. But yeah, all of these graphics, all our branding was created by our past graphic share. So shout out to Mindy. Um, Moving on, we have our historian, Anthony Fan, um, aka Enviorment, because he tends to have a lot of typos when he writes. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, basically, as a historian, he would be taking photos during like all of our events, whether it's service, small scale, or large scale events. But because everything's virtual now, um, most of the photos are gonna be Zoom screenshots. So if you saw like during our meeting, Lenore asked to take a photo. Um, Lenore is actually on his committee, media committee. Um, so like Ricardo said, the, he leads the media committee alongside the graphics chair. Um, and they're in charge of all our media. So all the photos, um, scrapbook, this year we're planning on doing a virtual scrapbook as well as videos. So you saw the board intro video. He also does like a recruitment video. Um, what else? Yeah. TikToks. Hmm? The TikToks about me and you. <laughs> he made yeah. both of them. <laughs> the, the two TikToks we just showed were created by Anthony. So you guys should follow our TikTok account. There's only two videos on there, but <laughs> still <laughs> follow it more to come. And then we have our Kiwanis Family Relations Chair, Alan Vu, aka Tagalog equals Japanese equals Korean. Uh, this is because he can't tell the difference between any languages. Um, they all sound the same to him. Uh, so basically what he does is we've mentioned before in the slides that there's different branches to Kiwanis. Um, there's the K-Kids, Actions, Key Clubbers, Builders, and Kiwanis themselves. Um, he is our liaison between our home club and the rest of them. So he's in charge of updating them, the Kiwanians at like Kiwanis meetings. Um, we hold events for key clubbers, for instance, Key to College, which is a big event where high schoolers come and learn about college life and also if they wanted to continue being in the Kiwanis family, um, they can learn about what being in Circle K is like in college. Um, so yeah. Let's look at the video. Can you 
explain that? Like, there is no explanation with Alan. <laughs> oh wait, he's here. Do you want to explain that, Alan? Oh no, it was just uh, Ren sent something about shadow clones in the chat, and I was like, "Wow, let's make a TikTok." Anyways, <laughs> we have our membership development and education chair, Jonathan Pacino, um, aka Mr. Clean, because he recently got a haircut and now he's bald. So if you look at the pictures on the right, um, he's bald. Um, anyways, as the membership development and education chair or MD&E, he works closely with um, his co, the MDNR, and uh, I guess me and Ricardo to pick families and the mentor mentee pairings as well. Oh my God, I thought that was him, <laughs> but I realized it was the screenshot. <laughs> I was like, Jonathan's right here. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Anyways, he, he's basically in charge of the whole family system. He um, leads the family head meetings um, as well as he plans new member induction and a lot of other like family events such as um, we usually have a beach wars at the end of the year and a club FTC um, in the fall and yeah and also because he's membership ed development and education uh, he had he's basically in charge of all the webinars and the alumni coming up coming up is um, Jonathan's planning and I'm not going to play this video because it's him singing and it's... <laughs> Did you put that video? Because I didn't. I put that video, but now I'm like, ugh. No, don't, don't show it. Don't show it. Don't show it. Me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Olivia's laugh. <laughs> That's right there. Okay, you can stop it. That's Jonathan's favorite song. It's horrible. You covered his professional picture with your video. I'm sad. All right, so next up we have our membership development and recognition chair, uh, Guy Swan Kao. Uh, as Olivia mentioned, he's Jonathan's co when it comes to handling the family system, um, developing the developing the entire family and picking out mentor and mentees. That's him and Jonathan along with me and Olivia to some extent. Um, his name is period. Uh, I don't have to explain why his name is period. It, it just it gives off that vibe when you look at these pictures. Um, on top of dealing with the family system, Guy is also in charge of our recognition in the club. Um, so as most of you probably saw during the meeting, he presented the recognition for the Golden Veteran and pretty soon the Golden Cadet. He's also in charge of rewarding the families when they have their competitions. So later on, they'll be having badges and stuff with them, and all of that was developed by Guy, as, as well as the point system for the families. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you want that picture of Guy for the Valentine's Day gram to send to your crush, uh, message me. Cute. <laughs> Moving on, we have our public relations chair, Kyla Anderson. AK carbon dating, and you don't want to know what that means. I it'll mean, make, probably it'll make out. more sense in the next slide. <laughs> You'll find out, yes, in the next slide. <laughs> but basically, the public relations chair is in charge of all our social media pages. So she helps run the Facebook page, Instagram page, um, TikTok, as yeah, I think that's all our pages. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, she helps like create all the event pages for all our large scale events. And basically she does a lot of like promotion um, outside of the club, I guess, um, through our Instagram page and stuff like that. Um, and recently we had our week of awesomeness. So she helped share that with Hannah, as well as um, she's in charge of all the tabling stuff. So like recruitment, like Kyla, compiled all those resources for us yeah <clears throat> <clears throat> next up we have our service projects chair 
uh, McKenna Pollen, aka Tree Ring Dating, uh, no relations. Um, so basically, he's the VPS's right hand man. Uh, he works with Audrey a lot to plan service events, whether they're small, large, medium scale, marathons, uh, tabletops. He's also in charge of the impact team. So when he mentioned the new one that was coming in, the impact teams have to meet with him and talk to him about what's going on. Um, so in the case a VPS can't make it or anything, uh, he would be the one in charge of service events. And also he's really good at playing guitar, as you can see in that one picture with really long hair. Yes. Tree ring dating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Next, we have our special <laughs> event chair, Koi, um, aka Kevin Nguyen, because he's just a Kevin Nguyen and how he acts. <laughs> um, but yeah, special event chair, he basically works on all the large scale events that our club has. Um, so he helps plan like the itinerary, the timeline, uh, helps book the venue and stuff like that. But usually all these events have like a respective chair. So Koi is basically like the executive assistant to um, the pointed board chair. And yeah, he's in charge of all the large scale events. Ugh. Wait, the video wait, cut wait, the video cut it off. Dad. Wait, I like the picture that was behind the video. I hate it. There you go. So next up we have Spirit and Social, Hannah Macarena, um, aka KFC Bucket Hat. Um <laughs> you can tell why she's KFC Bucket Hat on the two pictures on the right. Uh so basically Spirit and Social, they're in charge of the spirit committee that we just mentioned that after coming out for uh they're in charge of making cheers they're in charge of making socials for the club they also lead in making skits for ftc decon and any talent acts that people want to participate in um they're all, they would also make items for said events if they were in person called spirit items that we use to flex on long beach flex on the other schools that were long beach um why do I feel like I'm blanking out on the tasks of Spirit and Social? This was my position last year. Um, basically, um, she's Audrey's wing nut. That's it. That's all I have to say left. It's just a re repeat of the intro video. <laughs> Yes. Oh God, Olivia's hitting her desk now. <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh, I love. Okay, technology. This is our final appointed board position, and we have eleven A board members. Um, well, eleven A board positions. So, our technology chair is Renz Lane, aka Beep Boop Chair. Um, and while he's technology chair, he's always having technical issues. So that's one requirement of being a technology chair. Um, and besides that, he created and update is updating the club website um, with new events and updates, as well as this year, our first time ever, he's leading a tech committee. Um, so basically, they're also helping like some of them, they're like learning code for the first time, probably. Um, but besides that, they've been updating the website and making it super poppin'. Um, Renz is also in charge of all our general meeting slides. So every week, um, those presentations are all created by Renz. And yeah. All right, so next we have fellowship. Let's hope I don't forget what this slide is about. Um, so fellowship is one of our three tenants of the club. Um, it's probably the biggest one that 
people mention a lot. It's the reason a lot of people stay. Um, you will hear the phrase, I came for the service, stayed for the people, commonly said amongst older boomers like me and Olivia. Um, usually fellowship entails not only the socials that we have, but also our family system and our mentor mentorship system. So um, every year we have different families led by different people that all go based on the theme of the club. Uh, they're just smaller groups of members in the club that just bond and hang out and do their own stuff. Uh, we also have the mentorship system, which is if you're new, newer members, you have the opportunity to apply for it and get yourself a mentor that will hopefully help you navigate through college and also Circle K. And on the flip side, if you're a returning member, you can always pick up mentees and pass on whatever knowledge you want to give to them um, about anything. Uh, I have five mentees and all of them are on leadership positions right now. I just wanted to flex that for no reason. Um, this year, our mentorship and family systems are chaired by Jonathan Achino and Guy Swankow, who we mentioned before as the md &E and the md &R. Um, we have six family heads this year who are at the bottom. Um, Cesar Cornejo, Jonathan Kim, Lenore Fabi, Luke Breda, Richard Huang, and Sophia Villarreal. Um, each one is going to be in charge of their own smaller family, uh, and they're going to be competing against each other throughout the entire term to see which family is best. Um, last year, I was a fam head and my family won. I just wanted to flex that too. Um, on top of that, the mentorship, pro the mentorship program, the apps are going to be coming out soon. So once you apply to be a general member, um, you have the opportunity to apply and get yourself a mentor uh, in the off chance that you do get a mentor. Uh, you might even get a sibling. So you will have someone else on the same page as you uh, trying to navigate everything as well. Um, some socials I wanted to point out are like the ice skating event at the top. Um, it was a really popping event, you know, everyone had a good time. Um, yeah, everyone 100% had a good time. It was really popping, you know. Um, we have Bob Ross on the right where our fam head Luke Breda dressed up as Bob Ross himself. Um, all he did was put a button up. That was it. That's all he needed to do. Um, and we painted stuff. Uh, my picture's not on there because it's terrible. I drew a McDonald's Happy Meal. Um, other events we have that are not listed are Dark Harbor, which is a very spooky event where people go get scared. Uh, you'll never see Olivia at that event because she's a baby. Uh, we have Christmas lights at Naples where we go to a really fancy neighborhood and watch the Christmas lights together and take uh, really aesthetic pictures. And we have Club FTC and Family Wars, which we mentioned a lot before. It's just a family competition. Okay. Now we listed all the Circle K acronyms. Well, these Not are like all of them. <laughs> important ones we felt were important. Um, but we have two slides. Like this one's like basic CKI like terms, and then the next one's like big events. Um, so you guys probably heard us mentioning a lot of these acronyms, and we're probably like, "What the heck are they talking about?" <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll post this presentation later on. You guys could like look at it, um, but you guys probably know um, club event report form. Basically, this is like something the secretary works with mostly. Um, well, actually, everyone who chairs the event. <laughs> um, after each event, we have to um, record our attendance and fill out this report form and then send it to the secretary. So if we mention like a SERP, it's basically that. Yes. Um, blah, blah, blah. CKI, Circle K International, CNH, our district, Cal California, Nevada, Hawaii. Um, DB is the district board. Um, and do I really need to <laughs> <laughs> I, I want people to read. <laughs> Just say blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Lenore, what are you, like, what is the term you didn't know? when you first join. Event request form. So every time we have an event with like an outside club, normally if this was in person, we would have to um, actually like request to the district to um, have the event and get it approved. It's super annoying. So you guys should definitely appreciate all the inner clubs we have online. Um, 
as well as if we have a event with like a key club or like younger kids, then we have always have to send in an event request form. LTG Lieutenant Governor. So our Lieutenant Governor asked what an LTG was, but yes. Um, and then Jonathan and Guy's positions are super long. So we always just use the acronyms. So you'll probably hear MD and E a lot and MD and R, Ricardo, VPA, um, and PS. Kyla Public Relations. Yeah, Kyla Public Relations. I see student leadership program here and this is basically all of the student leadership programs. So, I mean, you'll probably hear like Kiwanis Club saying SOP a lot um, and it basically refers to like all Circle K, Builders Club, and Key Club, etc. We have even more. Um, this one's really confusing because it's also called CKI, um, but it's followed usually by North and South. It just stands for Crazy Competition for Infants. The people that made this event really wanted it to be called CKI, um, so they misspelled competition. Um, this year, since everything is uh, online, North and South are going to be combined into one event. So it's going to be CKI hold, hosted by CKI. Um, that's not confusing at all. Um, we have CKI Next, which stands for Circle K International Convention. Uh, clearly, it makes sense that the X stands for convention. Um, basically, that's just a really big uh, international event where schools from all over the world come in, um, they have workshops, they have events, they elect the new international board. Um, DECON is district convention, it's just CKI and Expo on district level. It's where all of the schools in California, Nevada, and Hawaii go to elect their new uh, district board. Um, DCM stands for divisional council meeting, so once a month our division, metro division, will have a meeting and that's basically where you get to meet other people from other schools. Um, it's also a chance to see what the DLT is going to be is up to and also to see what other schools have been doing this past month. Um, I cannot say this right. DLSSP stands for District Large Scale Service Project. Um, it's, it's a giant service event held by the district. It usually coincides with whatever our DSI is. So this year it's going to be environment related to the environment. Um, and then we have DPDC, which is District Professional Development Conference. Uh, did we have one this year? No, it hasn't been. It hasn't happened for like three to four years. Okay, I'm really glad Olivia put this in then, because um, um, it's because we were gonna have it like last year. We had a chair specifically for it. Randall actually was a TPDC, DPDC chair. Mm. That one's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a professional development conference, um, build resumes, uh, interviews, all that. Uh, DSP, which stands for Divisional Service Project. Um, that's just the district large-scale service project on a divisional level. Um, FTC is Fall Training Conference, which is our big event in the fall where we go up in the mountains. It doesn't sound like a cult at all when you say it like that. Um, we induct you into the organization. There's bonfires, we do chants. Uh, nothing scary like that. Fun fact that Olivia forgot to mention when she explained it was she was the chair last year. Um, so she planned probably one of the best ones in a while. Um, and we had a lot of fun and stuff. Uh, if you want to see the videos, you can see Olivia doing dances and everything. Uh, she 100% can't dance, so it's really fun to watch. Um, and then lastly, we have STC, which is Spring Training Conference. This is mostly for the people who get recently appointed and elected. It's just there to train you on whatever position you got. And it's also there to help you out in any other way, Circle K related, on top with a little bit of like professional development sprinkled on. I, oh. Okay, so this is our resources, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, international, I think the best way to find out information is through their website. They also have a Facebook page and uh, Instagram page, but I think if you want like information, it's on their website. Um, CNH, Circle K. Um, 
also utilizes their website for like resources and stuff like that. But if you want like information and stuff like that, I would say go on their Facebook or Instagram pages. Um, and then our division also has Facebook and Instagram pages. So we utilize the Facebook group a lot. So if you guys are not in it, definitely recommend you joining or asking like Ricardo and I or any board officer um, to invite you into the group. Um, and then Long Beach, we advertise our resources quite a lot. But if you need access to any of this, go to our link tree.